My favorite clip that has gone around since Ice, Ice Spice's new song, when, so I guess it's only been in the last 24 hours. My favorite clip, in any case, that has been going around the internet is care of a woman named Suki Hana and another woman named Bobby Altoff, who is a young podcaster, I take it. And they were uh, really almost coming to blows over the host's suggestion that the musician is a good musician. What do you know? That you're a musician. But that's why I'm interviewing you today, so I can get to know you. So I'm a musician. Mm-hmm. What the f*** that mean? Make magic or something? What is musician? I think that's, I think you're confusing that. Yeah, I'm not no musician. I, th- I make music. I make I, music. I, um, and that's not all I do. I make music, I act. I'm a TV star too, a young mogul. Uh-huh. I, just really quick, I think you're confusing. I'm not confusing nothing because I, you you don't know. I, you thought that all I was was a magician or whatever the f- you said. See, that's what I think you think I said. No, I said musician, I think, not what, magician. I don't think, baby. But I don't think. What I, is that? That's ghetto. I don't think. I know. So you you think? I didn't say magician, Suki. I said musician. And I think you are a musician. <laughs> no, baby. I do music. So you just really, just really quick. For the record, could you say you don't think you're a musician? I'm not none of that. But then after that, you just said, I do music. Yeah, I do music. <laughs> so in other yeah. words, you're a musician. No, I'm not. Okay. Who's on first? Who's on second? No, who's on first? I don't know. Third base. That's what this is. This is obviously a bit. Some people were sharing this as though this were a sincere miscommunication. It's obviously a bit. And it's a very funny bit. It's a, it's a version, in a way, of like an old Abbott and Costello routine. But it's also, and, and this is more to the cultural point here, the specific kind of bit this is, is a minstrel act. And <laughs> we live at a time where we're erasing all sorts of characters and all sorts of uh, shows and forms of art and jokes because they're supposedly racist. And they're supposedly racist because they come from minstrelsy. We got rid of Aunt Jemima from the pancake syrup bottle because it was supposedly uh, so racist, deriving from the minstrel tradition. And and it does. The Aunt Jemima character does come from the minstrel tradition. Uh, the irony of it is that the Aunt Jemima character was created by a black writer named Billy Kersans, who is one of the most famous minstrel performers in history. But we're not allowed to do that. Now, anytime a woman puts a little too much uh, concealer on for Halloween, we're all trying to figure out if if she put on blackface and to see if we can cancel her. Because you got to get rid of minstrelsy. This, but this is a minstrel act, and everyone's laughing at it right now because they refuse to acknowledge that. Just like the Tracy Morgan character in Thirty Rock was a it was a funny bit, but it, it was a minstrel bit. The whole the joke of it was he's a caricature of black culture and he seems kind of dumb and, you know, he he seems uh, silly and frivolous. And it's kind of funny. It's funny, you know, to make fun of any kind of a culture. But we're told intellectually today when you're not in any way allowed to make fun of black people. Except we all, we do it. It's not us. I didn't, a bunch of libs made 30 Rock. I am quite certain that Suki and this host Bobby Altoff are not right-wing conservatives. They're probably not Trump supporters, right? Even the, the sitcoms of the 1970s, great shows, The Jeffersons, Good Times, all those Norman Lear shows, they were, they were kind of minstrel shows. So all of this to say, it's not that I'm defending minstrelsy or whatever. I'm not defending Sukihana or any of these people. Uh, my point is, more an historical point, we look back and we throw stones at all of our forebears and all how racist our grandparents were and how evil and rotten and terrible everyone was who ever came before us. We are doing the exact same things. And in, in many cases, what we are doing today is much worse. Take the theatrical tradition and comedy bits aside for a second. We, we like to look back on history and say, can you believe that for... A, Two or three hundred years in America, we tolerated a, a particularly egregious form of slavery. Yeah, man, that's terrible. You know, we kill eight hundred thousand babies a year now. You know that, right? No, no, no. That's good, Michael. That's autonomy. That's freedom. That yeah. I'm just saying, in the future, maybe people will look kind of negatively on that. Mm, seems a little crazy to me. Everyone's going to be laughing at this bit. Everyone, but when we look back in history, people do the same kind of things. These same themes that recur throughout history. It's bad when they do it. It's fine when we do it. It's very bad when they do it. Speaking of putting on an act, 
nearly half of Uh, Speaking of there's a Missouri Secretary of State candidate who is, uh, she's got maybe the greatest campaign ad of the year. Uh, Her campaign ad consists in lighting LGBT books that are put in front of little kids on fire. This is what I will do to the grooming books when I become Secretary of State. Let's go. Welcome to the main event, applying pressure, but I promise I ain't make it These books from the Missouri Public Library. When I'm in office, they will burn. <laughs> now, hold on, hold on a second. I have a question about this ad. And my question is, what is the maximum donation allowed by law that one can make to a Missouri Secretary of State candidate? That, that's my only question, actually. What an ad. What an ad. Valentina Gomez, a woman on a mission. (laughs) When I'm in office, these books will burn. (laughs) And now I know book bans and book burning, they get a a bad rap these days. But uh, virtually every serious thinker for all of history has, has supported some degree of book banning or censorship. And many of them supported book burning. Going back to, I don't know, like, Plato, the apostles, um, the the great geniuses of the Middle Ages, the scholastics, even people who are not not exactly on my side of viewing things. You know, I think like Martin Luther, you know, not my main man, but that guy burned books that, you know, you get, this recurs throughout history, okay? And we have plenty of book bans today. What's funny is that the libs pretend, they always have these lists of the most banned books, and it's always like To Kill a Mockingbird or something, one of the best-selling novels ever that every school child reads by the time he's 12. That's not a banned book. There, there are legitimately banned books. Go like a, some like Holocaust-denying historian. That's a ban. Go try to buy one of those books. You're not going to find that anywhere. And I'm not, I'm not arguing that certain books shouldn't be banned. It's the libs who are saying that certain books shouldn't be banned. But they're the ones who ban all the books. Forget about books that, that most people would object to. Even just get down to the, the one book you're not allowed to teach in schools, the Bible. That's the book. The libs support that book ban. They would probably burn it if they had the chance. But they're going to get on this one and they'll say, she's a threat. She's an authoritarian. She wants to censor. That woman, co- compared to the liberal establishment, that woman is as open-minded as they come. What a great clip that was. Now, hey, hey. Hey, hey, come on, Jack. Come on, man. Corn pop, ring that bell. We'll see you next time.